Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco. Last week we worked on the development of a few of the areas for the housing and sort of commercial zones just to try and build up some of the area and we also just filled in a lot of the roads that we placed down in the episode before that. But this week we're going to jump straight into it. It's been requested a lot. We're going to get right into it. We're going to build the Stade Louis II, which is the home ground to Monaco, the football club. Now this asset has actually been created some time ago. You may have noticed it on the workshop. It's probably almost two years old now, which um, shows how long in the making this series has been going on for. But the stadium itself has been created by Chris Games. And in my opinion, the size of the stadium was a little bit too big for my road layout. It's not to say that the scale is incorrect, but based on the scale I'm using, I had to minimize the size a little bit. So that's where the procedural objects mod came into some great use. And you would notice then on screen a few seconds ago that I used that to pretty much all I did is I tabbed down the page down icon once um, to just bring it down a tad, not too much any more than that and it wouldn't look realistic anyway so we done that we got the stadium down the build itself the model is obviously it's an okay model um, don't get me wrong a lot of hours has clearly been put into this um, not a fan of the um, crowd um, that's not the most appealing to me personally um, but as we say this was created almost two years ago now and obviously a lot has changed in terms of what's possible within the game and the way you can design stuff as well. So we do do something about that a bit later on, but ignore that factor for now. The model itself looks brilliant in terms of the, the look of it, the scale, the, uh, the actual buildings themselves works really well with what I was hoping for, so that's brilliant. Um, and yeah, so we already had the road laid out, which is good. Um, so that saved a bit of time. It's pretty much just a case of plopping it down in the middle and sort of working around it itself. Now, before we move too much into what's on the screen, I have had some big issues with this save game and not sure if any of you guys have ever come across it. But basically, I load up my game and the simulation doesn't work. I can click on things but nothing actually actions from that. If I leave the game for around 10 minutes, this is actually in the game, not on about loading screen or anything, this is in the game. If I leave for 10 minutes, suddenly the game becomes responsive again and I can then see the simulation moving at the bottom left hand corner, I can move stuff, I can place items and it's just really bizarre. I'm not sure why or how this has happened. But it means, obviously, in terms of the project, it's a bit scary because I'm not sure if it's going to get worse or if there is going to be a solution for it. So at the moment, I'm loading up the game, which takes a good five minutes anyway. And then I'm having to leave the game for another 10 minutes, sometimes 15, for it to suddenly decide to um, pop into action. Now, I've checked my mods. I've checked what's been updated recently, and there's nothing obvious there for me um, I've had a lot of people looking into it a big shout out to um, Bloody Penguin who's um, been helping out along the way as well so is Avanya Avanya's been a great help in terms of um, any issues and mods I have so big thank you to those but this one just seems to be very bizarre it's not really I, I, I don't know what it is and it seems very troublesome to find out how or what it's doing so there's a few options I hope that it suddenly resolves itself because it did suddenly happen. It's not like it did it um, over time. It's not like I installed a new mod or an asset. I actually removed the last sort of five assets and mods I put onto here to see if it make a difference and it didn't. So it's obviously, I assume it's something related to something that's already in the game that may have had some sort of an issue or corruption or something to just scare the game into actually starting up and simulating straight away so the project is obviously going to continue until the game decides to not work or something like that so don't worry this project isn't over in this in that sense um, it's just if anyone has come across this issue before and found out a way around it do let me know because it is extremely annoying having to load the game up and then wait and keep your fingers crossed for it to actually work but 
that luckily that issue only started happening when I wanted to record the cinematics um, it's actually the day after the most recent live stream I did on Twitch so um, it was very bizarre to load the game up the next day and have an issue like this but anyway I'll not bore you anymore if you have come across this before please do drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you did or how it was resolved and hopefully we can get back to enjoying building on this map and seeing if we can complete it which um, is always gonna be a troublesome topic but um, we are still going we're still going strong and I must admit being a big football fan I was really excited to work on this area not just because of the football club not just because I've had this asset in my artillery for nearly two years <laughs> but it's a place that a lot of you guys have having, have asked for it to be built a lot of you keep asking when is the football stadium being built etc etc but also this area itself has a lot of different different areas and themes to work on you've got the stadium you've got the training ground you've got this little segment here we're working on which is a sort of hotel -y complex of some apartments and a little sort of tree bushy area um, almost like a parky area I guess you could class it as um, but yeah it's a nice area to work on and um, I was quite pleased with the outcome to be fair it worked out quite nicely and we've really took advantage of the um, buildings that we've had made for the series we've worked on a lot in this area a lot of different ones as well combined them together so um, that was that really and a big shout out to all the comments last episode as well. There's a lot of very nice comments for you all. Um, I'm very respectful for everyone in terms of the, you know, the waiting around for some of these Monaco episodes. Sometimes it does take around a month before I release another one. And me being stupid and all that, I have started a new UK series as well. So um, I'm trying to balance the two together. At the moment, it's kind of working in the sense of one week it's Isle of Wight, one week it's monaco and then i take a week off um and that week off isn't just in the sense of me going out and partying and not doing anything that sometimes that week is all editing as well so um the schedule obviously is always going to be tough for me at the moment especially with um, a full-time working job to battle against um and the fact that these episodes don't just take 20 minutes recording these are a good four to ten hours i think the footage for this particular episode was six and a half hours um, and that also doesn't include two hours that we lost <laughs> because the game crashed so um, as you can tell that does take a bit of time and that does have to obviously be put into consideration but I am truly grateful for every one of you who still watches and comes along to watch these Monica episodes follows the channel still even though I'm not as active as some channels on the uh, city skylines front but i am extremely grateful for you guys that are still around and kicking the channel along nicely it's really good and we are still growing we um have recently just hit 8,000 subs as well which is fantastic my goal would be to hit 10k this year not sure how easy that will be um but we shall see it'd be gr a great achievement if we could hit 10k um at the end of this year so if you want to help me out in that journey, please consider liking the videos that you watch of me and um, comment in there and obviously post it around. Talk to your friends, you know, the usual stuff to get uh, a video more viral. <laughs> so that's always appreciated. But nonetheless, whether we grow 50 a month or a thousand a month, the videos will still come because I'm enjoying these videos. I really do enjoy doing these videos. It's just. I wish I had more time to commit and um, you know really get going in some of these episodes but it's good now that I've got two series on the go I must say that the Monaco burnout is not as apparent now certainly with the UK series so that was one of the reasons why I took the plunge to start in a second series alongside I never really liked doing that because I don't have the time to do one series really <laughs> um, so yeah it's um really pleasing and i am truly grateful to everyone who is sticking along and 
throwing out their comments in the section each time that we release new videos it's always a great honor to read those and i do comment and respond to every single one so if you've got a question for me feel free to um, drop a message in the comment section now i have kind of just rambled on now for a good 10 minutes and we haven't really spoke too much about what we are watching on screen so let's jump back into it so as i was talking we placed down the um, training ground and now we're just trying to build up the buildings around it and this was quite difficult at first because I was trying to find the most suitable looking buildings and you'll see that I did have to use some procedural object modification on some of these buildings so I could lower them down if I did this would move it the ground would um, follow itself down and obviously make a very ugly looking mess so procedural objects avoids that because it goes into the ground it doesn't affect that as well um, and as I said this area I've not concentrated too much on detail there is detail going on in the sort of more obvious places the bits that sort of stand out like the football ground and the training ground etc we did put a bit more detail into that but these buildings here with these little hotels we've just done some very basic detail so we've used the Monaco walls you can see here on the outskirts and then we just add in a sort of a, a few little plants and uh, maybe a few decals on top just to make it not look too blocky because that's the only downside to using these paths these bright orange paths if you have too much in a big block it does look a little bit unrealistic if that's the best word to use i'm not too sure if it is because they are very nice details uh, very nice textures anyway um so i always try and put something on top of it and not do too much in terms of the uh the amount of orangeness <laughs> as the case may be um, and putting down these stained decals and just dropping them down with a page down button just to hide them a little bit just adds to that which um, is always handy Now going back to the comments I mentioned moments ago about the the orangeness and too much of it, I was trying to think of a way that we could have to create the um, sort of entrance platter of the stadium without using the orange um, textures. And what I found is these actual paths were perfect for the job in hand. Now they combine very well together. There's no sort of flickering. Um, the pattern themselves is perfect the, you don't matter how you line it up the pattern sort of match anyway and it's a nice way to change the look of this area I didn't want to have too much of the orange roads and pathways it was a bit too much and in real life Monaco this area is actually a, a, a more of a, a grey colour as opposed to the orange so we're using these pavements which are perfect um, I've done a sort of line of three and I wanted to create a, a little unique spot here. I wanted to kind of create a, a flowing, swerving um, step here on the way down. One, because I think it looks nice, but more importantly two, because um, the way the land lied in this area and the actual building meant that I couldn't get away with having it all level. As you can see, I have to raise up certain areas and I could have got it to all match, but it would have taken so much time back and forth moving the um, the roads and different nodes around to get that to to function well. So we just went with this. We created a little little our own little sort of step area in this corner here, which actually worked out quite nicely. But it's not as you see in uh, in real life Monaco. But we don't mind. We like adding a little bit of flair here and there. So 
um, and it looks really good in the cinematics at the end so make sure you stick around for those because they are really really nice i did enjoy that so as i just detail this front sort of area where do we go next in monaco a question for you where would you like to be seen us building onto next now i'm thinking of doing a bit more off camera work in the sense of just building up the uh the less attractive areas or the more um sort of commercial and housing areas whereby there's not really anything too exciting to um to work with so i'm going to probably do that off camera maybe we'll do a sort of before and after shot at the start of the next episode to show what has been done in the meantime but what would you like to see next the football stadium is now done there is a lot more left to do but i'm not sure where i want to take it next so i'm gonna leave it to you guys in the comment section below let me know what you want to see next But back into the time lapse. So this segment here, we are now working on these very nice, attractive looking apartments, very close to the actual stadium. And what I like about this area is it's very, very different to the rest. And what I mean by that is these apartments are clearly gonna be very expensive, being right on the uh, riverfront, right next to the football stadium. But it's the sort of foliage areas around it, the sort of tree areas that really change the dynamics of this location it looks really really pretty and it just changes the build well the way that you build um, and if you are a detail and creative builder you'll know what i mean by that it's in the sense of you know there's a difference between building the, in the game with just buildings like we do in here versus adding in some sort of foliage areas and some you know little forests and that you kind of have to get into a different mindset when you're working in different areas and what i liked about this build is there was so many different variances that we we're working on that it really was one of those builds that you just didn't want to turn the game off you wanted to keep building and building and building and i think one of these segments i pretty much built for a solid five hours non-stop and it was one of those moments where you just get so involved in the game that you can't get out of it you're you know it's like you're winning at a game obviously you, you can't win in city skylines in that respect but everything was going right everything looked perfect you was finding the right props the right assets for the task in hand and it just worked in this episode that was it was one of those episodes that just really i clicked with very quickly um and it was nice that a lot of area was covered but with a small amount of props as well like the stadium and football pitches themselves obviously take up quite a large segment of this um, but with minimal effort in that respect so it's a nice change to obviously doing the development video which is the last one which obviously took a lot of brain power and manpower in general just to keep doing what we was doing so very different type of episodes today in terms of me building and creating so that was really nice and again we are using the tibble technique that we've done so much before by putting down the stain decals over the roads over the pathways just to give that sort of rough look um, which is you know expected to be around these pathways and especially by the football club where a lot of people do end up walking back and forth now this front segment is obviously the main entrance to the stadium and i wanted to sort of spark it up a little bit so we did add a few decals down to add to change the look of it a little bit and we put down some of the gates and a few of the uh, part generator benches as well to try and bring people into the area um, so that worked quite nicely as well and next up we are just pretty much now just filling in this segment this 
is an additional hotel that runs parallel to the training ground. And then beyond that, there is actually a hospital that we work on as well. But uh, whilst I work on that, I'm going to jump away for a second and you can listen to some music and we'll catch up towards the end of the episode. Okay, so welcome back. So a lot of playing around, a lot of movement. We did put a bit more effort into the harbour as well as you saw over by the other side. And that's the difficult thing I find with Monaco. Each episode, I always find it difficult where to cut it off, uh, which is why a lot of my videos have been longer than perhaps what I intended them to be. Um, it's always hard because you kind of, when you're working on a project like this, you want to try and get as much done as possible, but you also want to have a good look for a cinematics at the end, um, which means you do need to build a bit more than perhaps you once thought you needed to. Um, and for example, I did look at the cinematic situation probably about two hours before or two hours of gameplay before what you're seeing on the screen now, and it felt like I needed to add more more detail more buildings around it to give a better look and make it look like more had been done if that makes sense um, because sometimes when you detail you can spend many hours and on the footage it may not look like you've done much at all which um, is obviously one of the downsides to being a detailer but one of the plus sides in my opinion but that is pretty much it for this episode. You will notice I did do a little bit more off camera that you haven't seen, but you'll see in the cinematics. Um, and that was just to sort of bulk up the area a little bit more. But other than that, guys, thank you all very much for watching. Please do feel free to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I know we get a lot of new people popping by, so it'll always be good to, to get you registered as a Pug Gaming subscriber. And again, as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please like and um, do all the other stuff. But other than that, I will catch you in the next one. It will probably be an Isle of Wight episode. Not sure exactly when that will be released. I was hoping to do that for next week when I'm away. Um, but with the issues I had with the game, things haven't been as easy to do. So we shall see. Otherwise, I will catch you in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and all the best. <laughs>